JT Shaver here with New Layer, and today I want to tackle a topic that has confused a lot of people for a long time, and that is V-mount batteries. We're going to take a look at what to watch out for when buying these batteries, some common misconceptions, and why you would even need them. First, I want to cover some of the more practical things before getting into the technical stuff. The first thing is simply the size, and it may not seem like a big deal, but all batteries are definitely not created equal. In general, higher capacity batteries are going to be bigger, but there are significant differences between brands. For example, I have a 190 watt hour V-mount battery from DNO Lighting and it is ridiculously huge. Compared to my most recent purchase of the IntelliTech Pocket V batteries, the difference is night and day. The big downside to big batteries is that they might not fit into some V-mount fixtures and even if they do, they can interfere with the functionality. Apart from that, it's just easier to travel with smaller batteries, especially if you have a whole collection. Another functionality difference are simply the type of ports that are available. All or pretty much all V-mount batteries come with a D-tap port which is used to charge the battery and can power pretty much anything with the right cable or adapter. On top of that, some batteries also have a USB port which is another the reason why I chose the Pocket V. It's really handy because you can use it to power USB peripherals like pocket lights or just use it to charge your phone or a power bank. Most batteries also have a battery level indicator and some even have a little flashlight so you can see what you're doing if you find yourself changing batteries in complete darkness. There are some special high voltage batteries out there but most regular V mounts are going to be between 14.4 and 14.8 volts. That's important to know because some higher power fixtures do require higher voltage than that. You don't really have to worry about that because V-mount fixtures are designed to have one plate if they only need 14.8 volts and usually have two plates if they need higher voltage. The two biggest concerns when buying V-mount batteries in my opinion are the storage capacity and the continuous power draw rating. Let's look at capacity first because there is some math involved and this is usually where people's eyes start to glaze over. With NPF batteries, you'll commonly find capacity listed in milliamp hours, but with V-mounts, you'll more typically see it listed in watt hours. You can convert milliamp hours to watt hours, which is important for a reason I'll show you later in this video. First, I want to make it clear that watts is totally different than watt hours. Watts is a measurement of power at a specific point in time, and watt hours is a measurement of power over a period of time. So to use a car analogy, watts is kind of like horsepower, and watt hours is kind of like gasoline. Watt hours tells you how powerful of a fixture you can run for one hour and if you have a less powerful fixture you can run it for even longer. If you have a 100 watt hour battery and a 100 watt light you can run that light at full power for one hour. If you have a 50 watt light you can use that same battery and run it for two hours. If you don't see the pattern here you just need to take the capacity in watt hours and divide it by the max wattage of your light and you'll find out how long you can run that light at full power. V-mount batteries can power all kinds of other things as long as you have the right cable or adapter like cameras and monitors, but I'm gonna stick with light examples in this video because that's what I know best. Now, the other important and arguably more confusing piece of the power puzzle is the continuous power draw rating, which is measured in amps. While voltage is like the pressure of the electricity, amperage is like the flow of juice being pumped out. To calculate wattage, you simply multiply the amperage times the voltage. If you want to find the required amperage of a light, you simply switch the equation around. So to find amperage, you just take the wattage divided by the voltage. So if a 150 watt light is using 14.8 volts of power, you simply take 150 watts and divide it by 14.8 volts. The result is about 10 amps, which is the required current to run that light at full power. This is really important and it's why not all V-mount batteries can power all V-mount powered lights. Every battery not only has a capacity measured in watt hours, but a continuous current rating in amps. I think this is one of the biggest hidden differentiators between batteries because this isn't always listed in the spec. Even worse is that some batteries don't live up to the specs that they do advertise. Many small batteries, around 100 watt hours or less, only have a maximum current rating of about 6 amps. With a 14.8 volt fixture, that translates to just under 90 watts, meaning you cannot use that battery to power anything over 90 watts. This is another reason why I chose the Pocket Vs because the 98 watt hour battery supports 12 amps of current and the 155 watt hour battery supports 15 amps. That means the smaller battery can power a 170 watt fixture and the bigger battery can power a 220 watt fixture which is really high for their capacities. Going back to capacity, I don't see a lot of people mentioning this but battery efficiency is also really important. Good batteries are around 85 to 90% efficient and some of that power is lost as heat. Some is also 
also used to power the electronics inside the battery and other things like that. So when you look at a battery's listed capacity, it's a good idea to multiply that by 0.85 or 0.9 so you're not overestimating how long you can run your gear on that specific battery. It also helps you decide whether or not you might want to step up to the next highest capacity. This is also a really big factor in deciding which lights to buy. For example, the Aperture 300D Mark II is a 350 watt light and the Godox VL150 is a 150 watt light. Both of these lights have essentially the same brightness, but the Godox VL150 uses significantly less power. There are other benefits to having a higher wattage light, but speaking strictly from a battery power standpoint, you're going to get a much longer run time with the VL150 because it uses much less power. If you plan to run your lights on battery power often, you can see why this is such a huge deal when deciding which lights to buy. V-mount batteries are very expensive, so you might be wondering if you can use NPF batteries to power the same type of fixtures. The answer is yes in most cases using a dual NPF to V-mount adapter plate. NPF batteries are half the voltage of V-mount batteries, but by combining two onto a single plate, you can use them with higher requirement fixtures. Like I mentioned earlier, NPF batteries usually list capacity in milliamp hours, and you can convert that to watt hours. To find the watt hours, you take the milliamp hours and multiply it by the voltage divided by 1000. If you need to find the milliamp hours, you take the watt hours and divide it by the voltage multiplied by 1000. There's also dual V-mount plates, which can be handy in a variety of situations. It allows you more flexibility because you can combine two same or different capacity batteries onto a single plate. This can be useful to allocate more power to higher power requirement fixtures on set. There's also travel limitations with batteries if you need to fly with them. The limit is currently 100 watt hours without getting special permission, so a V-mount adapter plate allows you to take more smaller batteries and combine them into a single plate when you get to your destination. Some dual V-mount plates, like the one I have from Intellitech, also allow you to hot swap the batteries, meaning you can change one out at a time to keep things running indefinitely. Now, let's talk about charging. There's two main ways to charge V-mount batteries, the first one being a regular AC brick adapter with one or two DTAP cables coming out, and these are great and they're fine and they're relatively inexpensive if you make light use of V-mount batteries. The other option is a dual V-mount charger or what I decided on was the quad charger for the Pocket Vs which, you guessed it, can charge four batteries at the same time. They do also have a quad charger for regular size V-mounts. Alternatively, you can charge the Pocket Vs on a regular size charger and you can fit two regular size batteries on the Pocket V charger. So if you're transitioning from using bigger batteries to solely Pocket Vs, you can use Use your big batteries and charge them on the smaller charger until you replace them. On top of all that, there's also a 4 amp XLR output on this and it's not meant to power lights so it doesn't provide enough power for that, but if you need something for lower power applications, it's there. One other important thing to consider with V-mount batteries is their longevity. If you're using a 100 watt hour battery with 150 watt light and running it at full brightness all the time, you're not going to get as much life out of your battery as if you were using a 150 watt hour battery. The reason for that is because you're taking that battery from full to empty more quickly than if you had one with bigger capacity. A good rule of thumb is to get a battery with the watt hour capacity the same or higher as the wattage of your light. So if you have a 150 watt light, I would recommend getting a 150 watt hour battery or higher. On top of everything else that I mentioned, some brands just don't live up to their voltage rating or the maximum continuous current rating. Some brands are also just less efficient than others. I said it already, but V-mounts are very expensive, so it can be tempting to buy the cheapest ones you can, and sometimes that pays off, but sometimes you're going to be the one that pays. With some cheaper batteries, the usable capacity might be lower, they might suffer from voltage issues, and they might just have a shorter lifespan. If you can afford it, it's never a bad idea to spend the money on quality batteries. The last thing that I want to say is that everything I said about V-mounts also applies to gold mount batteries. They're the same exact thing, they just have two different ways of mounting the battery to your gear. That's all the nerding out I can do on batteries for one day, so leave a comment and let me know if I missed anything or if you have anything to add. I do gear reviews, lighting setups, and other videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe and also follow me on social media because I post a lot of stuff there that doesn't quite make it to YouTube. I'll have links in the description to all the stuff that I mentioned in this video and they are affiliate links but it doesn't cost you anything extra and it really helps me create more videos like this. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.